Hey, I had a couple deliveries this week and figured I'd do my first mail day video. Um, my thoughts here, uh, number one, I'm pretty excited about some of the cards I got and uh, also just wanted to share my thought process around what I bought and uh, you know, kind of how I went about picking out the cards. So um, I'll start with uh, <clears throat> a less expensive order first. Um, I ordered uh, about 15 cards from a, a dealer in the UK. Um, he had a deal that was if you buy, I think it was if you buy 10 uh, cards that he had listed between two pounds and three pounds and you get five of them free and you pay for the other five. So um, I saw a few that were part of that deal that I really, really wanted. So I, uh, I decided to just get the 10. So I'll kind of talk through what I got there. Um, to start with, these five are all from the same set. <clears throat> it's kind of a neat set. I don't have a lot of cards from, uh, but it's the famous Cricketer set by Gallagher. And this is uh, 1926. Um, so, you know, not an early issue for Hobbs, but you know, anytime I can get a card from Hobbs, it's not like a extremely common one. Um, you know, for essentially these ended up being a little bit more than one pound each. So, you know, less than $1.50. Figure that's worth it. Um, these ones are in nicer condition than the other copies of these I have. I actually do have both of these already, but um, again, I figured for that price, it's kind of hard to go wrong. Um, so I got those two Hobbs. Um, Sutcliffe, so his rookie's 1922, but this is only maybe his third or fourth card. And again, I have a few other 1926s from him, but this is my only one of this specific card. Um, and it's in pretty nice condition, so I figured, again, for the price, can't beat that. Uh, Grimet, uh, he only has one rookie from 1925, so this is a second year, and, uh, you know, apart from that other, you know, B. Morris uh, one, you know, this is one of his first cards. And then uh, Fry, so uh, this is, I guess, kind of like a, a look-back card for him, which is kind of interesting because it's almost 100 years old. Uh, but he had, you know, long since retired, I'm sure, by this point. But uh, tells a little bit about all of his um, accolades in, in various sports, which is just kind of neat. And again, you know, can't really beat that for two pounds. Um, got a couple of tennis rookie cards that I didn't have uh, that I thought would just be, be worth getting. Um, Frank Shields and uh, Bunny Austin. So... Both of these guys I've, I found out about through the 1936 set that I have a, a few copies of. Um, but, you know, Frank Shields only has a few cards. He's an American Hall of Fame tennis player, and I thought, you know, for that for that price, um, why not? You know, not a not a great condition card, but, I um, mean, you know, I probably won't be spending big bucks for, for any of these guys. But, you know, Buddy Austin is on a lot of the 1930s Britain sets, so this is an early... Obviously, rookie card for him, too. Another Hall of Famer. This card, I have one other copy of, but, you know, I thought, again, for the price, getting a, a Bradman, you know, um, team card. You know, I, I think the team cards are neat. You've got a couple other Hall of Famers on, on here as well. I uh, just thought that that would be worth picking up. Um, so, you know, those were the ones that, that was I was pretty excited about. Here are the ones that I was really excited about, and these weren't all two pounds, but you know, he had a, a Frank Woolley he was selling for four pounds, you know, damaged, right? But uh, you know, this is a 1931, uh, sorry, 1911 rookie card, uh, as far as I know, of Frank Woolley. And I have two other backs of this, but this one is slightly different than the other two I have. So it's another kind of variant, which I just think is kind of neat. So for four pounds, I figured why not? Um, again, Condition is, is pretty poor, um, but I just think it's neat to have. <clears throat> I have a few copies of this already, and if you've seen my other video, um, I kind of go through a lot of my cricket cards. It's a pretty long one, um, but I do have a few copies of this. This one, though, is is pretty, pretty daggone nice. The condition of this one, you know, you've got sharp corners, um, the front is just really, really clean, you know, slightly off center, but, um, you know, this is one of Len Hutton's 1938 rookie cards. And, uh, this was actually listed for two pounds. Um, so that was part of that deal. So that's pretty tough to pass up. And then, uh, I did not have this rookie card of Wally Hammond. So these ones are obviously a good bit bigger. Um, there's two versions of this 
um, Sunripe. Uh, 1926, he is the only rookie from that year. He was 23. Um, there's a smaller version of this and the bigger version. I just think these bigger ones are super neat. And I've seen that the condition on these is, is usually pretty pretty rough. I think they're probably the collectors didn't have great ways of keeping them clean. So this one is in fairly good condition. You know, it's a little little stained or, um, you know, off color in certain spots, but in general, a really nice card. Um, so that one was listed for three bucks or three pounds. Um, and then this one was probably the one I was most excited about. So um, the other Hall of Famer from 1928, other than Don Bradman, is Harold Larwood. Um, and he... Uh, has a rookie in this Wills set, which, you know, if you're following cricket at all, cricket cards, um, the Bradman from this set is just going absolutely crazy. Um, I saw one with a pin, pin prick in it sell for 500-something uh, pounds, like $700 um, the other day, and they're consistently just going for that much or more. $1,000 is not out of the question for even a half-decent copy, so... Here's another Hall of Famer from the same set. Um, this is a really, really clean one, a little off-center. Um, this top right corner is a little, you know, a little nicked, but um, in general, like, really, really nice from a, from a tough set. Um, and I think this was four pounds. So, again, like, tough to beat that. And, you know, in total, like, I'm just trying to share kind of what I'm paying for these. Like, in total, all the cards I just showed you, because I got that deal... Uh, shipped um, from the UK to the US cost me about 25 pounds so you know let's call it $35 uh, which I just feel like is is pretty crazy cheap for an all Hall of Fame uh, lot with a lot of rookies in it um, and some of them in really exceptional condition uh, one other kind of random order that I got um, big Phillies fan I just kind of found out about these cards um, they're from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. They're, you'll see them called the Exhibit Series. They don't have a lot of markings on them, um, but I was actually able to trace this one specifically to 1950, uh, which is one of the very first cards Richie Ashburn actually had. Um, so pretty, pretty neat card. Um, got it fairly inexpensively and just love it. Um, I have other Richie Ashburn cards from the 50s and 60s, but thought that was worth picking up. Uh, and then this is the, the order I'm most excited about and I got this from a, a contact another kind of online friend I would say that uh that collects a lot of cricket cards but uh this was six different Bradman cards I got from him uh and the total I'll just share kind of came up to between like 200 and 300 dollars um none of these are in exceptional condition uh but a couple of them are very rare um so starting with this secrets of cricket card there's four different Bradman uh, kind of uh, batting styles, I guess, that are in the set. Um, so these are small, um, kind of neat, kind of rare. Um, there's actually a book that talks about how rare some of these cards are. This one was listed as, you know, fairly hard to find. Um, so that was in there. Um, I did not have any of these, by the way, and, and I have a lot of Bradman cards, but not a lot of, the you know, the rarer ones. So uh, it's, it's just nice for me to get a bunch of these at once. <clears throat> Sweet Acres, 1932. Um, you know, pretty cool one. You'll see these sell, you know, I don't think I got a great deal on this. I don't think I got a terrible deal. I think I got a pretty fair deal. Um, but some ones that I would have, you know, bid on and, and lost and gotten frustrated instead, I just got them all together. This one's in the nicest condition of the lot. 1932 uh, BDV. Um, so this is a Australian company, um, cigarette company from the 30s, uh, to Godfrey Phillips. He was 24 at the time. So this is uh, Associated Press, I believe. Um, Australian and English cricket stars. And this is actually really nice condition other than like a few spots with significant paper loss. So obviously would not grade well, but I still think it's really nice. Um, happy to have it in my collection. And then these last two are both um, from an Australian uh, licorice company. 
This one is the more famous portrait because I think it's a little bit easier to find. There's a few different backs to this, actually a couple different sizes as well. Um, but uh, I've wanted this one for a while. This one's actually in really nice condition other than you can kind of see the left side is cut, kind of bowed. So I don't know if that was cut in the factory that way or if somebody trimmed it at some point, but um, otherwise a really, really nice one. Um, I've seen these in pretty bad condition. And then the final one, uh, definitely the most rare, the one I was kind of most excited about is also a licorice card. Um, and this one's from 1934, Australian licorice. Um, this one I, I had never even seen uh, sold before. I looked in the, the book that kind of talks about rarity, and this is listed as you know one of his rare cards. Uh, so again, not great condition, but just to have a copy of this um, is, is definitely more rare than any of the other Bradmans I have, probably including his rookies that I have. So uh, pretty neat. Uh, that's it for me. I'll try to do these every once in a while when I get some cool stuff in, but just wanted to document what I'm picking up as I, as I do it.